Another important performance aspect of your operating system, especially in Windows, is virtual memory. Virtual memory is essentially part of the hard drive that we set aside so that we can take things that would normally be in our relatively short supply RAM memory, our random access memory, and we save it off onto the hard drive, which will free up space in our real memory to perform other functions and take the things that we aren't currently actively using and move them off to the side. So we're essentially expanding the amount of workspace that we have, even though we didn't actually put real memory chips into our computer. Let's look to see exactly where this virtual memory is configured in the Windows operating system. To find our virtual memory, we need to go into some advanced settings. That again is from your Start menu in your Control Panel. You're going to see within the Control Panel an icon for your system. This is all in alphabetical order. So if we scroll down, you can see there's your system icon right here. When we drill into this, it gives us information about this particular operating system and how it's running, how much well, processor speed, how much memory. We would like to get more information about an advanced system setting. That certainly applies to virtual memory. And if I click on that, the operating system will give us another user account control window saying, these are pretty important things. Let's make sure it's a human being doing this. Let's click Continue. And the option that comes up allows us to look at the advanced settings for performance, user profiles, and startup and recovery. For what we'd like to see for virtual memory, we need to go into this first setting for performance and click Settings. There is within here a setting for visual effects that you could change the way that Windows looks on the screen. That's not what we'd like. Let's click this other option, which is Advanced. And under the Advanced tab, we have Processor Scheduling of how the processor uses resources, and we have Virtual Memory. So that's what we'd like to see. And it explains that it's a paging area on the hard disk that Windows uses as if it was random access memory, memory chips. The total paging file size for all drives is 1,024 megabytes. And if you click the Change button, Windows has a couple of options available to you. The first one is Automatically Manage Paging File Size for All Drives. In almost every case, this is what you should choose. Windows will figure out how much memory, how much disk space you have available to make virtual memory of, and then it will decide how to do that on every single drive that you happen to have. Now, if you would like a lot more control, maybe you have more disk space that you would like to provide as virtual memory, or maybe you don't have as much disk space and you'd like to make your virtual memory much smaller, you can make some changes to this just by unchecking the Automatically Manage. And now you can go through this list and specify if you would like this particular drive to have a custom size, either initial or maximum. You would like it to have a system managed size. Or in a very extreme case, you could say, no paging file at all. Maybe you have so much memory in your computer that you're never going to want to page anything out to the hard drive as virtual memory. You could say, no paging file for me and click Set. It even tells you that if you disable this or set it to less than 200 megabytes and a system error occurs, system may, the Windows system may not be able to write information into the error log and identify that that problem happened because, well, there was no memory available for Windows to be able to do those things. Do you want to continue? Yes or no? You can say yes. And now I've just gotten rid of all my paging memory right there. And we click OK, and that's it. We've now reconfigured the virtual memory inside of our Windows operating system. So if you find that your system is complaining of messages that it is low on virtual memory, or perhaps you are running out of memory, and you think there may be things in memory that can page themselves out, if only you had a little more space on the hard drive, you may want to manage some of those virtual memory settings yourself. If you use a laptop, then you know how important power management is to the overall operation and efficiency of your system. And even on a desktop, being able to manage the power might gain you a few extra benefits for our performance. It'll gain you extra benefits for your power bill. And so that if you walk away from your computer, have your monitor automatically turn off after X number of minutes, or spin down your hard drive, or turn your computer off entirely. You can do all of that inside of the Windows power management features. It's not too surprising that your power management features are also contained in your control panel. So we'll go to our Start or Windows icon. We'll click the Control Panel. 
And in the control panel, there will be an option for power. There's our power options. And if I double click, you can see I have a couple of different options available to me. Windows Vista expands on the capabilities of the power management, but they're essentially the same whether you're in Windows XP or Windows Vista. You can have a balanced setting, a power saver setting, or a high performance setting. And it gives you a graphical feedback of what the battery life and performance might be for all of these settings. You can drill down into any of these settings and make very specific changes into how the power operates on each one of these. On my computer, I really just have the ability to change the display settings. On a laptop or other piece of hardware that has other components that can operate with the operating system, you may have other options available. But generally, you have two categories. How does it run when it's on a battery? And how does it run when it's plugged in? And you can specify how often your display turns on and off. You could specify whether you're plugged in and whether you're leaving it on or whether you're on battery. Since those things use a lot of battery, you may choose to turn it off a little quicker if you're on a battery view. If you click the advanced settings, you can really drill down into a lot more details. You can see you can ask, uh, connect to almost any aspect of the hardware that you happen to have and be able to configure how does your wireless adapter work. Should you enable or disable the USB ports if you are in suspend mode? What if you're changing and clicking things on the power buttons? What should happen if you close your laptop screen? What should happen when you open it up? What if you hit the power button? What should you want the operating system to do? You can make some very, very specific changes in here and apply those to any of the existing performance profiles that you've set up. Just another way that you could help really tweak exactly the way you would like your operating system to operate with the hardware, and in many cases, save on some power.